How's it going everyone and welcome to a Skyrim ENB performance guide where I'm going to be showing you the tweaks that I used to make my ENB run great in Skyrim. I know a lot of people have issues with their ENB in Skyrim not working great, giving them lag spikes and stutters, but I'm going to be showing you some tweaks that I made to my ENB to make it run a lot more efficiently in Skyrim so you get much higher FPS and much less stutters while you're running in ENB. Also this tutorial is going to be for original Skyrim or old Rim as a lot of people like to call it. It's personally what I play on. So Skyrim Special Edition users, I don't know what the results are going to be with these tweaks for you. I don't even know if these tweaks are going to work at all for you. So I just wanted to throw that out there. But I hope these tips that I'm going to be sharing with you work just as good for you as they did for me. So let's get right into it. So an essential tool when it comes to stabilizing your ENB in Skyrim is the CTD and Memory Patch EN Boost by Boris Vorontsov, the founding father of ENB. Pretty much what EN Boost is going to do is depending on the power of your system, it's going to give you a more optimized ENB local file, which as many of you know is one of the main files that is contained inside ENBs. It's going to give you a more optimized ENB local depending on how much VRAM you have in your system, in your graphics card, to therefore give you a more stable experience when using an ENB in Skyrim. So I'll leave a link to this in the description, but you want to go to the Files tab right here, and you want to download EN Boost. So once you have EN Boost extracted to wherever you want it, I have it on my desktop, you want to open the file, and depending on what graphics card you have, I have an NVIDIA graphics card, so you want to select the NVIDIA folder. If you have an AMD or Intel video card, I don't know of any Intel video cards, that's probably for Intel HD graphics, you want to select these. But I have an NVIDIA video card, I have a GTX 1070, so I'm going to select this. Now you're going to see this menu right here. So pretty much what these are are different ENB local files depending on how much VRAM you have. So you want to select the corresponding folder to how much VRAM you have. I have 8 gigs of VRAM but that isn't on here. So I'm just going to select the largest option which is 6 gigabytes. But if you have a 4 gigabyte card, 3 gigabyte card, a 2 gigabyte card, a 1 gigabyte card, a 1.5 gigabyte card, or a 128 to 768 megabyte card, select the corresponding folder. But I'm just going to select the 6 gigabyte. And this is the ENB local file that you're going to be using. Now you want to make some tweaks to it because not everything in the ENB local file is set correctly for the ENB to actually work to its fullest, but still give you more performance. So I'm going to show you how to tweak it in a second. So when you open up the ENB local file, you want to go to the top and you want to locate the global section right here. And you're going to see two options in here. Use patch speed hack without graphics and use deferred rendering. Now ENB boost by default makes it so the graphics are turned off for better performance, but we don't want that. We want to make sure that the ENB is fully working but still having really good performance. So you want to completely flip these. You want to set Use Patch Speed Hack Without Graphics to False, and you want to set Use Deferred Rendering to True. And this will make sure that the ENB is working to its full potential while still having the really good performance from all the other tweaks that we're going to be making. And then lastly, you want to go down to the memory section right here and you want to find Expand System Memory X64. Now if you use the Crash Fixes mod, you may run into an error that pops up when this is set to true, and you may run into some issues with this set to true, so I would just recommend turning this to false. But once that's done, you want to go to File click save, and then find the ENB local that you just edited and copy and paste it into your Skyrim directory. And I'm going to go in game and show you what other tweaks you can make to further increase the performance of your ENB in the ENB menu. So once you're in game, you want to open up your ENB menu by pressing shift enter. Now I know that there are some ENBs out there that have their hotkey set differently for the ENB menu, but most of the time it's going to be shift enter. If you're not sure what the hotkey is to open the ENB menu on your ENB, you might want to check on the mod page of the ENB and they might clarify it there, but most of the time it's going to be shift enter. So you want to open the ENB menu. I would also recommend opening up the console and pressing TM so you can pause your game completely so you're not pulling out your weapon when you're making adjustments, but at the same time you can see everything that you're adjusting. So once you're in the ENB menu, you want to go up to the first menu right here, and this is where we're going to be tweaking some more things to further increase performance while we're running an ENB. 
So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up performance right here, and you want to go down to the bottom where it says enable occlusion culling. Now some ENBs may or may not have this on, but I would recommend turning this on as it is going to give you a few frames to your performance, and that may not seem like a lot, but when we're combining it with all the other tweaks that we're going to be making, it really is going to add on to the amount of performance we're going to be getting. So if you don't have this on, make sure it's on because it will give you a little bit of extra performance. Now if you are having stuttering issues with your ENB, you may want to go to the memory section right here and go down to reserved memory size MB and you may want to mess around with this number as this will really uh, determine how many stutters you're going to be getting. I usually have mine at 1024 as I find I get the least stutters with this setting but you can also go to a number like 512 and this is usually the average number when it comes to the reserve memory size MB. But you can also go as low as 256, and this would only be recommended for graphics cards that are a lot older. But what I would recommend doing is just finding a sweet spot where you won't be getting any stutters. Like I said, 1024 is my sweet spot where I won't be getting any stutters. That's actually the max amount of megabytes you can put into this option. But I find that I get the least stutters with 1024 on. But that doesn't mean that you're going to have the same results. You may be getting even more stutters if you use more of your graphics card's resources. But that's only if you have a weaker graphics card. If you want the ENB to use more of your graphics card's resources, just turn this up to a higher number until you find that you're getting a very little amount of stutters. So most ENBs aren't going to have this feature on, but if you go down to limiter, you want to open it up and at the top right here you're going to see wait busy renderer. Now most ENBs don't have this feature on, but if you do go into your limiter section and you do find that this is on, you want to turn it off. Because as you can see uh, in the FPS counter up here, if I do turn it on, as you can see, I start to begin to lose frames. In some areas when there is really low frame rates, you could lose as much as 10 to 15 FPS with this on. So definitely, definitely keep this off. This is an absolute performance killer and keeping this off will definitely keep your frame rates more balanced. Again, most ENBs will have this off, but if you do find that it is on, be sure to turn now, it off. Now this next tweak is going to be for you people who don't have very capable PCs, but you want to run an ENB very efficiently. So you want to go down to anti-aliasing right here. And as many of you know, anti-aliasing smooths out a lot of jagged edges, and at the same time, it's going to cost you a bit of performance. So if you do find that these are on, then you can turn them off if you don't have as good of a PC, but I have a pretty good PC, so I usually keep these on, and it does improve the graphics quite a bit when you have edge anti-aliasing and temporal anti-aliasing on. The same thing goes for anisotropic filtering. If you open up the engine section right here, you're going to find the anisotropic filtering options right here. Now, for those of you with less capable PCs, I would definitely recommend turning this down to 4. And the reason I say 4 is because I found that 4 is that point where you're not really going to notice much of a difference in the graphics, but you're going to get a performance boost, and at the same time your game is going to look pretty good. But as you can see, if I go down to 0, the game starts to look really blurry and pixely with the textures, but going up to 4 really does improve it drastically. And as you can see, if I go up to 16 really fast, you didn't really notice much of a difference there. If I go back down to 4, again, not much of a difference, but if I start going down more from 4, the textures are going to start getting really, really bad. So if you do have a weak PC, definitely turn this down to 4, as this is the number that is going to give you more performance, but at the same time, not really affect the graphics all that much. However, I would only recommend this to people who don't have very good PCs. I'm talking like under a GTX 1050, something like that. If you have a GTX 1070 or really just a graphics card with 4 to 6 gigabytes of VRAM, then you, you shouldn't have to do anything with this. But this is just for you people who don't have very capable PCs, as I know there is a lot lot of you out there, but this is still a really good fix for all of you who don't have a really good PC and want to run an ENB. Now we're going to be moving away from the top menu and we're going to be moving down to the bottom menu, the ENB series menu. Now you're going to see all of these green check marks, these are all of the graphical settings that you have in your ENB and some I have turned off as you can see and some I have on, most of them at least, but there is one in here that I would definitely recommend keeping off and that is reflection. Now, as you can see right now, if I turn on reflection, nothing really happens to the graphics, and this will happen in a lot of locations. Reflection doesn't really change the graphics all that much, but if you do turn it off, as you can see, my FPS is floating around 56, 57. If I turn it off, you can see that I did gain a little bit of performance. I'm floating around 58 FPS now. So because reflection doesn't change the graphics all that much, I would just recommend keeping it off, as it will give you some performance when you're using an ENB. 
Now you want to scroll down and you want to go to these tabs right here and these are pretty much what is contained inside each of these uh, graphical options. This is where you can actually customize each and every one of them. And the first one you're going to want to open up is SSAO underscore SSIL. This is where the ambient occlusion and indirect lighting is. And what we're going to want to adjust in this menu is not the sampling quality or the sampling precision since those don't really affect performance much. That's why I have them on very high. But you want to go down to the filter quality right here. And as you can see, I have this on lowest. And the reason for that is if you put it on lowest, you're going to get a boost in performance. But at the same time, the graphics really aren't going to change all that much. So as you can see, I'm floating around 57, 50. 8 FPS. If I put this on very high, as you can see, I'm going to drop a few frames. I'm floating around 56, 55 FPS. But if I turn it back down to lowest, as you can see, little to no change in the graphics, but I did gain a few frames there. So I definitely recommend turning that down to the lowest setting, as this will give you some FPS. As you can see, all these options right here I have off, just because I feel like my game looks the best without them on. And these might even negatively impact your performance, so I would just keep those off. Then you want to close this menu, and you want to go to the menu right below it that says Skylighting. You want to open that, and same thing with the Ambient Occlusion. You want to go down to the Filter Quality tab, and most of the time this is going to be set to high, but you want to set it to low. As you can see, if I set it to high, I'm floating around 57, 58 FPS. If I turn it to high, I'm going to drop to around 55, 56 FPS. So you want to turn this down to low if you want a few extra frames. So this last tip is for you people who have an ENB depth of field dot effects tab in your shader parameters. If you don't have this appearing, then you can go to the top right here and click show shaders window. But this last tip is only for people who have an ENB depth of field dot effects. And if you open it up and you see a quality tab of some kind, I'm using Snapdragon's depth of field for my personal ENB setup that I have going on here. And I do have a quality tab. As you can see, I have it set to zero. And this really won't affect the look of the depth of field at all. We'll just make it look a bit more blurry, but you can always make it look less blurry by adjusting the actual size of the blur. And turning down the quality really will uh, not only loosen up the pixels in the blur effect of the depth of field, but it will also give you some more performance. And the depth of field won't look like crap like you would expect it. It'll just look uh, slightly more blurry. Now, all the depth of fields in ENBs are different. I don't even know if you're going to have a quality tab like I do, but for those of you who do, I would definitely recommend turning down the quality. So anyway, that's going to conclude my Skyrim ENB performance guide. I hope these tweaks helped you as much as they helped me. And if you have any tweaks that you personally use that I didn't mention in this video, I would love to hear it in the comments down below. You'd be helping both me and everyone else who watches this video. And if you found this video helpful or enjoyable, I would really appreciate a like. And if you want to see more Skyrim content like this, then be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload a video. And also, if you want to chat, my Discord is in the description down below, but until then, I'll be seeing all of you next time.